Hello friend. Let us take a case of unbalanced transportation problem. Till now we were discussing various uh, methods of initial solution or modi method of getting optimal solution of a transportation problem. To solve a transportation problem, it is necessary to have the transportation problem a balanced problem. What is a balanced transportation problem? If total demand equals to total supply, then we can say that the transportation problem we have is a balanced transportation problem. But if demand is less than supply or supply is greater than demand or supply is less than demand or demand is greater than supply, that means total demand and total supply are not equal, then the problem is unbalanced transportation problem. To solve any transportation problem, it must be a balanced transportation problem. So, if we have an unbalanced transportation problem, we have to make it a balanced transportation problem. Then only we can solve it. Now the question is how to make an unbalanced transportation problem a balanced transportation problem. It is very easy. Take the first possible situation. If demand is less than supply, then we just have to add one dummy column as an additional demand center. See in this case the total demand is 215 units and total supply is 235 units. That means demand is less than supply. We just have to add an additional column as a fourth demand center that is imaginary or virtual. That is dummy, nothing but dummy. So we have to add a dummy column or dummy demand center having all transportation costs as zero. And its demand is supply minus demand, total supply minus total demand. Total supply is 235 units minus total demand at present is 215 units. So it comes to 20. Now, the transportation problem is balanced transportation problem and we can solve it. If supply is less than demand, the logic says we have to add a dummy row, a dummy supply center with all zero transportation costs and the problem will be a balanced transportation problem and we can solve it. Now, let us solve this problem through VAM, Vogel's approximation method. And now we know that in Vogel's approximation method, we require to calculate penalties for each row and column and the row or column with the highest penalty will be selected and in that selected row or column, the cell with the lowest cost will be allocated or distributed the quantity. So, row penalty and our trials will be like this here column penalty and our trials or itinerary now for the first row the lowest cost is 0 immediate higher is 4 so the penalty comes to 4 minus 0 4 for the second row lowest cost is 0 immediate higher is 16 penalty equals to 16 minus 0 16 for the third row the lowest cost is 0 immediate higher is 8 8 minus 0 penalty comes to 8 for first column the lowest cost is 4, immediate higher is 8, 8 minus 4, penalty comes to 4. For second column D2, the lowest cost is 8, immediate higher is 16, 16 minus 8, penalty comes to 8. In the third column also, the lowest cost is 8, immediate higher is 16, 16 minus 8, the penalty comes to 8. 
and in this, in this column penalty comes to 0. Now the row or column with the highest penalty should be selected. The highest penalty is 16 in row S2. Let us select it. We have selected row S2. Now in the selected row we have to select the cell with the lowest cost that is with 0 and we have to make allocation. What is the rule of allocation? Demand 20 or supply 82 whichever is lower. So we have to allocate 20 units in this cell. Demand of this dummy column is satisfied. Out of 82 we allocated 20 units so now available 62. The interpretation of allocation in this cell is out of 235 units 20 were not to be transported anywhere because the total demand is 215 actually. So now we have decided that 20 units or supply of 20 units available from source S2 will not be transported anywhere. See the solution, partial solution shows that we are going to trans transport it or ship it to dummy demand center. Dummy demand center is a virtual demand center. In real, it is not in existence. So, now we have decided that out of three supply centers, source available from S2 equivalent to 20 units will not be transported anywhere. Okay. So, now... This column is not to be considered for calculation of penalty. Another round of calculation of penalty. First row, okay. That <coughs> column should be cancelled. Now another round. First row. The lowest cost is 4. Immediate IR is 8. So penalty 8 minus 4, 4. In this case, lowest cost is 16, immediate IR is 24, demand, uh, penalty comes to 24 minus 16, 8. In this row, lowest cost is 8, immediate IR is 16, 16 minus 8, again penalty comes to 8. Now, calculation of penalty for the columns. In the first column, the least cost 4, immediate IR 8, 8 minus 4, penalty 4. In the second column, least cost 8, immediate IR 16, 16 minus 8, penalty 8. In the third or D3 column, least cost is 8, immediate IR is 16, again penalty comes to 8. There is a tie between 4 rows and columns in total. Now what is the tiebreaker? Least cost is the tiebreaker. In this row, the least cost is 16. In this row, the least cost is 8. In this column, the least cost is 8. In this column also, least cost is 8. So, we are not going to select row S2. That is final. But in the remaining 3 row and columns, there is a tie between least cost. Everywhere the least cost is 8. So, let us check. Where can we allocate greater quantity? If we select row S3, the least cost is 8, where we can allocate 72 or 77, whichever is lower, 72 units in this cell. If we select column of D2, the least cost is 8, there we can allocate demand 102 or supply 76, 76 units. In this case it was 72, in this case it is 76. Now if we select this column, Demand 41, supply 76, whichever is lower, that will be the allocation. So, allocation of 41 is possible. Allocation of 72, allocation of 76 and allocation of 41. The cell with the greater quantity of allocation should be selected. So, we are going to select this cell. That means ultimately we are selecting this column. And let us make allocation. Demand 102, supply 76, whichever is lower. 76 supply of S1 exhausted out of 102 demand of D2 we have already supplied 76 units so remaining is 26 units
we have to cancel we have to cancel the row of s1 since we have cancelled row of s1 now no need of calculation of penalty for that row now for the remaining table again least cost 16 immediate higher 24 penalty comes to 8 here also penalty comes to 8 because least cost is 8 immediate higher is 16 16 minus 8 in this column least cost is 8 immediate higher is 16 penalty comes to 8 in this also least cost is 16 immediate higher is 24 so penalty is 8 and in this column also the penalty is 8 all 5 rows and columns are with the same penalty tie between all rows and columns if we select this row there is tie between these two 16 and 16 if we select this row it will be 8 so we leave a row of S2 because least cost of S3 is less than the least cost of S2 so S2 is now not in the competition if we select this column the same cell is selected with least cost if we select this column the least cost comes to 16 that is greater than 8 so we leave this column we are not going to select D2 and similarly D3 has also the least cost of 16 that is less than 8 so we are also not going to select D3 so ultimately there is tie between S3 and D1 the same cell is selected whether we select S3 or D1 so let us make it clear which column or row we should select ok we allocate 72 units the whole demand of D1 is satisfied if we select S3 row out of 77 supply of 72 is made so we believe that we are going to select column D1 so let us make allocation 72 or 77 whichever is lower 72 demand of D1 is fully satisfied out of 77 supply available from S3 we allocated 72 so now there are 5 units so we have to cancel column D1 and since we have cancelled column D1 now no penalty will be calculated for that now there is tie between all rows and columns because we can see that the penalty comes to 8 in all columns and rows for 24 minus 16 if we select this row least cost is 16 allocation possible is 41 or 62 whichever is lower 41 if we select this row again it is 16 but the allocation possible is 26 or 5 whichever is lower so it is only 5 so we are not going to select S3 if we are going to select D2 the least cost is 16 again the possible allocation is only 5 units 26 or 5 whichever is lower so we are not going to select D2 if D3 is to be selected the possible allocation is 41 or 62 whichever is lower 41 that is nothing the case is similar to selecting S2 so there is tie between S2 and D3 whether we are going to select D3 or S2 again the same criteria we are going to allocate 41 to this so we believe that all demand of D3 is satisfied so we are going to select D3 and let us make allocation 41 demand or 62 supply whichever is lower 41 demand of D3 is fully satisfied out of 62 allocation of 41 has been made so 21 remaining quantity now we have to cancel column of D3 because all demand is satisfied so ultimately now we have only two open cells in one column so we but 
in these two rows we cannot calculate penalty so we are not going to calculate penalty just we are going to use the principle of least cost 16 rather sell with 16 is first selected possible allocation is 5 or 26 whichever is lower so 5 units out of which 21 remaining and the last cell is 24 rather with course 24 allocation is 21 21 so now all the units available from sources S1, S2, S3 have been supplied to various demand centers and demand of all the three demand centers have been satisfied. This is end of solution. Let us count the number of cells with allocation or occupied cells and they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The table is with 4 columns and 3 rows 4 plus 3 7 minus 1 equals to 6. So this is non-degenerate solution. Let us calculate the cost units multiplied by rate that is rupees per unit and that will give us the cost in rupees. Units 76 cost or rate 8 70 into 8 560 plus 6 into 8 48 560 plus 48 600 8. Similarly, 21 units at the rate of 24 rupees. 21, 24. 24 into 20, 480 plus 24, 504. 41 into 16, 41 units, 16 rupees. It comes to 656. at a cost of 0. We are not going to supply these 20 units. 72 units at the cost of rupees 8. 72 at the cost of rupees 8. 70 into 8, 560. 8 into 2, 16. So it is 576. And last 5 units at 16 rupees. 5 into 16, it is 80. Summation. comes to 2,424 rupees. We can ship or transport or send all 215 rather. The total comes to 235 because we have already written these 20 units which we are not going to send anywhere. So ultimately all the units can be transported at a total cost of rupees 2,424. This is the initial solution. Still, to check the optimality of this solution and if it is proved to be non-optimal solution, then we have to use the close path or close loop and we have to make it the optimal solution. I leave that entire exercise to you. Just try whether this is the optimal solution or not and if it is not an optimal solution get the optimal solution all the best thank you